how the top people in the world do it. And we're talking about Mr. Beast, because I love Mr. Beast. The number one YouTuber in the world, not even 120 million subscribers. Each, each video gets millions of views. This is the number one entertainer in the world. There is nobody bigger than Mr. Beast. Now, do you see any words on the graphics? Interesting. Do you? I say D Day 97 is the only one. This tells me a little bit on the title. This should be what these ads look like, but yet they don't because unfortunately we still approach real estate like it's selling and it's not. We're storytelling. We're trying to engage people, whether it's by images or whether it's by actual video. Are you ready? We're going to be talking about Facebook, Facebook ads, scripts, funnels, all, all the good stuff here. I, I want to know who here has run a Facebook ad, whether it's a boosted ad, whether it's a, a lead ad, or just a regular type of ad with a picture and said, hey, go to this website. I want a yeses and I want noes. Diane is the first one to tell me yes. Diane, you win an emoji that's a cookie so i'll throw that in there a little later uh but <laughs> susan yes i did oh so we got a lot of yeses gurpreet i did yes yes yep yep boosted regular okay 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 now next question because it'll set the tone for us tiffany's the only one who hasn't no problem tiffany we're going to help you out what has been your feeling about it. It's hard to gauge success from just um, an answering on a webinar, but I want to know what has been your feeling on it. You like it, you don't like it, you've seen some type of a success on it. And eh, I'm getting, eh, Diane, you're like on fire on responding quickly. I might give you double cookies here. Uh, you want to do better. All right. I like that. Here's an opportunity as you're answering. I want to, yes, no, it sucks. It's amazing. I'll, that's the answers I want because. A lot of marketers are jumping out of Facebook right now, which gives us a massive opportunity to jump in or jump back in because the prices are lower and the opportunity is still there. Because guess what? Facebook is still the third most visited website in the world. And the audience there typically owns a home already. So they're either going to upgrade or they're going to downsize. And with that, I've got Gus Castro. He's the CEO, founder of Power ISA. They do more than ISAs, but that's what it all started from. I've known him for years. I use his virtual assistant company, and I've been using them for about three years now. They're amazing. Gus, welcome to the show, man. Awesome. Thank you so much. You know, a real joy to be here, you know, uh, with, with someone like Tristan, who is not just a really good marketer. He's Mr. CMO. Let's just say that, right? I, I, I've been on one of these in a while with you, Tristan. So congrats on that. Congrats on that, right? So you guys are getting a super expert opinion here today. But, you know, I, I love the topic and, I, and I'm really passionate about this topic, not only because my company, Power ISA, has called through 250,000 uh, Facebook leads over the last, you know, I think probably 18 months. Uh, but but you, you, learn, you learn a lot from following up with these leads because it eventually leads up the funnel to, okay, where did this come from, right? Because not all, you know, campaigns are, are created equal, right? Not all leads come out the exact same way, right? The, the funnel starts, the funnel starts with that ad. It starts with the ad. It doesn't end there. And I'm going to talk about that too, right? There's a, there's, there's a work to be done once you're done with the ad. The ad is part of the problem. It's not the full equation, but, but it starts there, right? It starts there. So I've, I've made, you know, a, a whole slide deck and I want to also break out, you know, the, the face, the meta, I'm sorry, Facebook, you know, old, old habits die hard. The meta ads manager, the meta ads manager, that's the new, you know, way we call Facebook ads manager. So I want to, to look at that real quick too, but I have a lot of content here today, uh, but, but I want to set the table, right? I want to set the table with the kind of opportunity that is out there. Like Tristan said, 
number three most visited website you know in in the world right still facebook and instagram together the top social network out there right still the number one social network and there's a lot of news about facebook and the competitors and all of this and all that stuff is true i'm just telling you the facts of right now right still the number one social network out there and it's got people that are in grade school and it's got my dad who's 76 and like loves the thing, right? So it's a weird environment where there's so many people on it, right? It's really interesting. And when you spread it out, Instagram versus Facebook, also really interesting how that breaks out. But lucky for you guys, we're talking about both. You kind of get both both two for one when you're talking about ads. And I'll, and I'll talk about that a little bit more. But let me let me go ahead and share my screen too. So let me jump in. And you can jump in, buddy. Whenever you see something interesting, go for it. Because uh, I want I, I love getting your, your take on this kind of oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. I'm so, going to, I'll interrupt you a few times. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So here we go. So so this is, I, I love this chart, right? I love I love charts that go straight down to zero because this chart- <laughs> Wait, wait. Yeah. Gus, already- <laughs> This looks like the current real estate market. I know, right? Exactly. This is this Are is buyer activity. About the same thing here. This is buyer activity in Malibu. You know, uh, over the. <laughs> it's <laughs> terrible. Stop market. it. So, so you know, th this is what this shows is a similar reaction to that, but this is like the typical amount of leads that you would get on your website from organic sources, right? People yeah. come into your website without ads, and this is like a national number, and it tanked you know, a few years ago, like right? people would get a bunch of results from SEO. It was all about hacking the SEO and getting more SEO. And then suddenly, holy cow, SEO got much more challenging. Does it, I wonder if anyone knows what happened, something around 2016, 2017. If you don't know what happened, these little companies called Zillow, Redfin, Trulia, do, decided to dominate the organic search results for real estate, right? And just pushed a button and they owned everything suddenly, right? All of the, the most common organic search terms for real estate, became, you can tell from this chart when they did it, right? When it became like 2013, 2014 timeframe, they started. And then organic search results went into the toilet for most real estate agents, okay? It was harder. It just became harder to get organic leads coming to your website. Much, much harder after those years, right? Online leads. This is data from NAR, right? This is from 2020, but this has only gotten probably more interesting. 53% of home sales happened with a previous agent, which meant 43% of home sales, the person didn't use the previous agent, right? Like, hey, that, I, I, I always think that's an interesting piece of information, right? 47% of transactions, the, 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 the parties did not use their previous agent, which I always, I always harp on the agents for not following up with their clients, but that's all the other side of that equation is that there's an opportunity there, right? To get transactions from these folks. And I love this data. The number one thing I love from this uh, picture here, Justin, 70% of the silent generation looks for homes online, okay? 70% oh, wow. of the silent generation. This is like people's grandparents. Okay? This is my dad, who's Ooh. almost 80 years old. He's almost 80 years old and he's on Facebook. Yeah, and he yeah. loves looking at real estate online, right? Just, you know, whether it's like a vacation home or, or, or like an investment or like managing, he manages rental property. So man, the guy's like all in and he's like, he's 80 years old, right? He's 80 years old and he's rocking it. 90, you know, not a surprise that 99% of millennials are looking for homes online, but, but, but the trend is clear, guys. The trend is clear, really, really important to be online and to be generating leads from the internet, very, very clear. Very, it's almost like, oh, I'm preaching to the choir here, right? Uh, more data to sustain that, how many hours people are spending on the internet versus social media. Uh, it's almost like, look at those numbers. Social media is, I, like, I got this from Gary Vaynerchuk. Social media is another way to say the current version of the internet for most people, right? Mm -hmm. Social media is the current version of the internet that they use on a daily basis. It's a fancy way of saying it's the internet of today, okay? So some people that don't dabble in Facebook, don't, 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 are not going all in, don't have a strategy around it, you're really, really being left behind, okay? And starting in 2018, something, another really interesting thing happened. Another really interesting thing happened. That was the first time that in a tech, the, the NAR technology survey, people said social media leads were really good. That was the first time that happened. Because before then, people were like, oh, these are garbage. <laughs> this is the worst thing ever. Like, yeah. I ran Facebook ads in 2013, okay? I ran Facebook ads in 2014. Eh, you know, it was, I wasn't too impressed with that ad product. By 2018, 
uh, it had really matured and it's only gotten better uh, since then, right? So there's a lot of the background, okay? There's a lot of the background information around Facebook leads, Facebook leads. In this session today, we're gonna be specifically talking about the ads you can create from the Meta Ads Manager. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about Facebook leads for a reason. Right now, in, in the end of 2022, early 2023, yep. there's still one of the best, lowest cost, best ROI opportunities out there for real estate. True. That was true a year ago. That was true two years ago. It's true right now. Will it be true next year? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Tristan knows. I don't know, right? There might be something else a year from now. But it is the best opportunity right now that we see for great ROI. Yeah. One of the pros and cons you can see here is that it's very dependent on ad copy and on images. This is in contrast to Google pay-per-click, okay? Google pay-per-click is not dependent on ad copy and images. Not really, right? It's like, it's all about keywords. Keyword, keyword phrasing. It's more about that, uh, knowing what you're doing there. More so, more so than ad copy and images. Facebook is very dependent on that. The other end of the spectrum is, for example, YouTube ads, where it's dependent on video, right? Video content editing creation. So you kind of find, it's always good to find out where, what, are you, what are you willing to do? What are you good at, right? The ad copy, the images, the video, like true video, like a first video platform like YouTube, or is it like a, like a text and image platform like Facebook and Instagram? Or are you going to go more like, you know what? I just want to do the AdWords. Just, I want to buy some AdWords and they want to get those leads, right? So you should also identify kind of what this is at. Facebook is, is interesting because of that. You can't just buy an AdWord and get some leads. It doesn't work that way, right? Send them to my website. Homes for sale in Malibu under $8 million. Make a deal. You know, let's go to, let's go to Tristan's website. That, that's one strategy you can follow. But, but, but Facebook's a little bit different, right? And Facebook leads, this is where a lot of the moment and the frustration came from earlier. They tend to be middle of funnel leads, okay? Middle of funnel leads. They can include folks mm -hmm. that are just getting started in the process. They're just getting started. And, and a good buddy of mine, right, wrote a book about it, wrote this book called Too Nice for Sale. Oh, check out who wrote that for, can you see that here? Forward by, who's that guy right there? Tristan wrote the foreword to this book, okay? So you should probably read it, okay? So I love this book because it lays out this argument. That I, I put it in two bullet points, this whole book about this, right? Mm -hmm. the, the approach you should have with these leads, okay? The approach you should have. Why okay. some people get like hit there. Why do people run into a wall with Facebook leads sometimes, right? I have not seen a book lay that out better than this one. And I don't know if you can... And, and can you like type that in there, Jake? Like the name of the book, Too, ni Too Nice for Sales, in case people don't see that. Too Nice for Sales. I love this book. And look at that, man. Like I've actually, this is an ugly book now because I've like actually gone through it a few times. So uh, it's a great one, right? And Barry happens to be a moderator of LCA. Love Barry, he's great. Um, but, but he's laid it out, right? Because you get a lot of different kinds of leads from Facebook, okay? Dre the dreamer phase. People that are maybe a year out from doing anything. They're, they're barely getting started, right? So a good chunk of people are that way. People that are in the planning phase, the planning phase, okay? What does that mean? That they're, okay, beyond even like thinking of getting a home, now they want to put a plan in place. They might have a lease that they need to take care of. They might need to actually get, figure out pre-approval process, right? They're, they're starting to put a plan in place. Then you've got shoppers, people that are actively looking at homes with, with that are more highly qualified uh, 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 leads, right? And then you've got transactors that are already working with an agent and are in the process mm -hmm. of buying a home. If you were to like, like draw this out, it's, it's a true funnel, right? It starts wide at the beginning and it ends up very narrow at the bottom, these transactors, okay? And in the book, one of the things I loved about this book is it lays out very clearly that a couple companies like Realtor.com, like Zillow, are poised to dominate that shopper transactor segment of the market. They've invested billions in like winning that part of the market, like by getting those leads and selling those leads at a 35% referral fee. Like, and again, not here to criticize, not here to hate on anybody. That's the model that they have. And I think that's a very lucrative model to be very honest with you guys. And the book lays out that there's a huge opportunity if you build a funnel and a business that can capture anyone in these stages, anyone, okay? Because the mistake a lot of agents make 
is that they create these ads and they only want shoppers and transactors. That's all we want. I, I, are you pre-approved yet? Do you want to go look at a home tomorrow, Tristan? Yeah, no? Okay, well, you know, call me when you're ready for that. I don't want to, you know, we shouldn't stop. We shouldn't talk yet. That's what, that's, that, that's what we're saying. That's what we imply with a lot of the scripting and a lot of the approach we have at some of these leads. I love this book because it says, okay, you got to be ready for any of these, right? And the biggest opportunity there is now and in the next decade, yes, she says that, next decade, is people that can convert anyone on that list. Dreamer, planner, shopper, and transactor, we love those folks. Those are the best. Those are the referrals we get from our sphere. Hey, help my buddy buy a home. That guy's a shopper. He's a transactor. They're almost at the end. Great. I love those. Those are great. The big opportunity are with these dreamer and planner leads, okay? Learning how to generate and convert that segment of the market. Zillow doesn't have a lock on those. Realtor.com doesn't have a lock on that, right? They don't. It's wide open. I mean, they wish they did. They don't yet. They don't yet. <laughs> so let's say that, right? So the big opportunity there, if we're open to learning how to generate and convert these leads, generate and convert these leads, okay? That's a big, big thing we want to understand, right? Just I'm, and I'm setting the table for this discussion because this is important to understand. Because if I just look at the ads, go, go forth and you're going to be frustrated with the result, right? I don't want you to be to give up after running these ads for a week, okay? That's not the right approach to have. You've got to understand the life cycle of these leads that are coming from Facebook. If you know the rules, you can play the game, okay? If you know the rules, you can play the game. You can win. If you go into Facebook expecting only shoppers and transactors, you're going to be frustrated. You're going to be disappointed with that, okay? And that's where the frustration comes from, Tristan, right? That's where the, like, oh, man, Facebook leads are the worst. Like, actually, if you play it the right way, it can be a massive business. And I know that because this guy, Barry Jenkins, he sold a th almost 1,000 homes last year, this team, okay? So almost 1,000 homes. A lot of those, a good chunk of those, Facebook. Okay. So like, yeah, Facebook leads are not transactors and shoppers, not all of them, but they can build a massive business. They can help you build a massive business. Okay. Definitely. And my, yeah. and my team has, that's called through 250,000 of these said over 25,000 appointments with these leads. I can tell you, I'm a testament to that hundred percent. I know teams that are building massive, massive businesses uh, off of Facebook because they see the same thing that Barry sees. That's where the opportunity is. That's where you can build something uh, massive, like right? going on these platforms and generating these leads. Okay, cool, awesome. Make sense? Great. Totally, I like it. Yeah, hundred percent. Great. Let's jump into it. Let's, let, let's talk about ads, right? That that's the that's the preamble, right? We're we're yeah. here. We're warmed up. We're ready to go, right? This is the preamble. Yeah, yeah. Now, we're getting into the execution, right? Facebook ads, do's and don'ts, okay? Facebook ads, and if you feel called out in this section, I apologize in advance. Did not mean, oh, don't want to offend anybody, right? What you shouldn't be doing right now, end of 2022 with Facebook ads, boosted posts, okay? So that's what I did in 2013, okay? You could boost a post back in 2020, even earlier than that. When was the, book? when did they do that? Like 2010, I can't remember. The very first few ad products that Facebook uh, came up with right you know because they kind of didn't know what they were doing say well why don't you just pay to boost this post why not right so uh and i think you can do this even out of the news feed you can boost one of your own posts um you know that were like we're on your wall so i mean that that was interesting that was cool but emphasize this is a ad product that facebook made before they knew what they were doing okay because it was very easy to do click a button boost the post you know how where when i don't know I just gave Facebook some money and something just happened, right? So it's very easy to do, but it is very easy to do poorly as well, okay? There's very little kind of indication. And then again, I'm, I'm oversimplifying this. The feature has gotten way better than a decade ago, but the results haven't gotten much better, right? Uh, for real estate, when you're talking about generating real estate leads, that's what I'm talking if you don't, If you're not in this, in this webinar to learn how to generate leads out of Facebook leads, for real estate, then you're in the wrong webinar, right? That's what we're talking about. And boosted posts are just not the solution, okay? Another mistake people make, and I see this, Tristan, every single day, I get served these ads. And it's the picture of the agent, right? Patiently <laughs> waiting for your call, right? 
I'm patiently waiting for your call. And you're probably going to wait for a very long time because that's not an interesting ad. That is not an engaging ad because true. When, we, when we approach these, right, we're thinking about, well, you know, when they're looking for an agent, I want them to pick me. So I should be talking about the, the best asset that I have. And that's me, right? That mm -hmm. is what I want to promote. That is what I want. I want Tristan, when he's buying that home in Malibu to pick me as an agent, right? So it seems kind of obvious. I want to put myself out there, right? But the, but the fact is that doesn't really work, okay? That doesn't really work. You shouldn't also be running uh, ads on less than $10 a day. You shouldn't be doing that, right? Uh, and most markets we see $10 a day is the minimum. And in Malibu, it's probably going to be more, more than that, right? In Malibu. But, but in most markets, $10 a day, you can get away with that and get good results from that. And another thing, this is really important. You should not forget about this magical thing called the special ads category, okay? And I'm not going to get into a lot of detail on it, but you need to use it because your ad is either employment, real estate, or I think credit related, right? It's one of, the, one of those three, right? So you got to, and if you don't use it, your, your ad won't even run anymore. You used, you used to be able to sneak it past the specialized category. I tried it, right? And they eventually catch on to you. Now it doesn't even run. It doesn't even run anymore, okay? You can't even get it to run nowadays if you don't select the specialized category. The bots and the tools have gotten way better at detecting these real estate ads. Don't do it. You're going to get your ad removed. And if you try it enough times, we'll get your ad account banned. Okay. So just be really, really, really understand that. And I'm going to give you guys a couple examples of this. Okay. So if these agents are in the audience, I apologize. I don't mean to do anything mean. I'm just trying to help folks avoid some very common mistakes, right? These are the ads that I'm talking about, guys. I see these ads every single day. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to interrupt for a second only because it, it matches two things really quick. Go, go. Um, on this. And uh, Mario, first of all, let's answer Mario's question. You can answer this one. How can we avoid the special ads category? Ah, great question. You can't. <laughs> That's a good one. Well, oh, great. So, so let, let me say this. For an ad to not be uh, required to run under the special ads category, it cannot mention the word real estate, buyer, sellers, properties, listings. Okay. If you avoid all of that, then you can run an ad that isn't going to be flagged in the special ads category, right? Yep. Why would you want to run an ad like that? I guess look at my question, right? I don't think you're selling real estate. I don't, I don't, I don't think so, right? You might be promoting something else. I meant, and that might be okay. But you know, you don't, it, the Facebook algorithm is becoming unbelievably smart, right? If you try to hide some text in an image, for example, it used to work, guys. You could put, you know, homes for sale in, in text in an image and it wouldn't catch on to that as fast. Now it does. It catches even on to that as well, right? So, I mean, you, you, there's no point in trying to avoid it if you want to generate real estate leads. If right. you want to generate real estate, if you don't want to generate real estate leads, no problem. I like <laughs> That's that. fine. But this is probably, not, probably the wrong webinar for you. This is, you have to use it. You have to use it. There's no way around. Do me, do me a favor and unshare your screen. Yeah. It doesn't let me share mine really quick, no. only because I'm not co-host. And I'm going to show you something. I'm going to read this with you. This is an article, uh, MIT. It was a study that was done by them. It was um, Netflix who really wanted this study done. Uh, it says, you might think it would be impossible to identify any images you see for such a short time, like really quick flashing. However, a team of neuroscientists from MIT have found that the human brain can process entire images that the eye sees for as little as 13 milliseconds. The first evidence of such a rapid processing speed, right? So that's number one. I'll show you number two. But first, understand what that means when people are looking at images right? We think in images. I don't think in words, right? You tell me a word, I instantly think about what that looks like. You think of, if I say cow, we'll have different versions of cows. I'm thinking of a brown cow with horns and it's not doing so well. It's kind of thin. Um, I don't know, Gus, probably thinking of a black and white cow with no horns. What are you thinking, Gus? Pretty much. You're pretty much. Yeah. There you go. So if we think about that, and we go back to what Gus said about, well, what are the images we're putting up there, right? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna shortcut it. I'm gonna be like, hey, you know what? Let's just use this link. Uh, I'll, I'll give you the link, but this is the Meta Ad Library. So I'm gonna pick the United States. I'm gonna pick category housing. 
And give me a city, Gus. What city should we fool around in? Good, good old Seattle. Let me try that. Seattle. So we're going to go to Seattle, Washington, and it's going to give us all of the ads that are running right now. Oh, there we, we go. take a look at you know, it. Hey, I, and I hate to call out people, but look at Joel. My goodness. My goodness. Yeah, right? look, um, Joel Jenkins didn't get the message, but that's okay. You know what I think? Um, I'm not going to blame him specifically. I have a feeling that it's somebody else running this ad, like a company that just kind of puts crap out there for you. Right. And, and like there, there are certain things that, that you really shouldn't put on here. I mean, you want people to, you want to leave people guessing a little bit. Why, why are you putting up the price? Let's think about this now for a second. Just think with me. I'm going to stop sharing really quick because I'm going to share something else with you. Something having to do nothing, at least what you think, nothing with real estate. And we think now visually, let's think, how the top people in the world do it. And we're talking about Mr. Beast, because I love Mr. Beast. The number one YouTuber in the world, not even 120 million subscribers. Each, each video gets millions of views. This is the number one entertainer in the world. There is nobody bigger than Mr. Beast. Now, do you see any words on the graphics? Interesting. Do you? I say day, day 97 is the only one. This tells me a little bit on the title. This should be what these ads look like, but yet they don't because unfortunately we still approach real estate like it's selling and it's not. We're storytelling. We're trying to engage people, whether it's by images or whether it's by actual video, right? And so I'm going to put up the link right there. So you can have some fun in your area. Take a look at your competition. Take a look at the amazing job they're doing or the lack thereof. Back to you, Gus. 100%. And I love that, Tristan. Thank you so much. And you know, that is a great tool. That is a great tool to find out. A little bit of it's called benchmarking, right? A little bit of benchmarking on what local teams are doing in your area or in any city in the U.S. Uh, you can see what ads are running. I wish you could see the ROI. You can't, obviously can't see that, but you can see what people are running and spending money on. It's hard to tell, you know, if I, if I looked at that, I go, wow, someone's spending money on an ad promoting their face. It must be working really well, right? You know, but I've seen the data, right? I know how to run these ads. I know why people run these ads and I know what the results are, right? And the result is it's not appealing to folks, right? It's not engaging, to, it's not engaging your target audience. It's not engaging your target audience. Ultimately what it comes down to, it is something that you think might be useful to someone. Cause if you're looking for an agent, I want to put my face out there. Look at me, look at me. And, and that's just not how these, uh, uh, these platforms work. That's not something that's going to make you stop. It's interruption based marketing. You're scrolling on this feed, right? And I'm going to see the face of an agent. Oh, cool. Another face of another agent on a business card. Oh, that's what I wanted to see on Facebook. I wanted to see a business card from someone. That's not reality. It's not real. And sometimes it's obvious. If you've been doing this for a long time, it becomes obvious. But this is for people that, where it's not obvious. It can be a non-obvious issue because, hey, Gus, I see million-dollar agents, their face on the billboard, and I see their face on the, on the, on the bus bench, and I see their face everywhere. I want to be like them, right? So number one, right, every business is different, right? And that maybe they're getting a good return on those ads, but I would almost bet you that they could be getting a much better return with an ad that actually appeals more to what buyers want, right? And, and, and so, so I, I'll tell you, just because you see an ad somewhere does not mean it is a successful ad, and it does not mean there's getting any kind of positive ROI. There's not doesn't mean that at all. But that's always a good way. I love, I love that tool. I use it a ton. Uh, to get to get an idea of what the market's doing, where things are going, but but let's 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 get back to it, right? So this is a great example, and we just saw some live one. That's great, Tristan, because people are running these every single day. Don't do this, guys. Don't do this because when people are browsing Facebook, they're not going to stop their endless browsing by looking at your business card. That's not something that's going to be appealing to them. Okay. Well, then what is appealing to them nowadays, right? So the bet, and again, we've we've tested this out with. You know, like video ads, short video, longer video, images, collections of images. 
the one thing that keeps outperforming everything, even mm -hmm. in December 2022, when we're recording this, is ads that give buyers what they actually want. And that is homes, okay? They want to see homes. They want to see big homes, little homes, beautiful homes. That's what they want. That's uh -huh. the, that. If anything, maybe you can turn off this webinar and go home, right? This is this is ultimately the, the message we want to give you. We're going to get into a specific example. We'll show the ads, right? But that's the messaging that I see when we look at the actual results. And again, and probably the biggest surprise people see is like the video ad. Oh, but the videos must be perform performing. Video ads for real estate can be amazing. They can be great, right? Some of these drone footage, some of these amazing ads for video. The, the homes still outperform them, at least right now. The homes on average are gonna outperform everything. They're gonna outperform everything. And I feel, I'd love to get your thoughts on this, Tristan. I feel that number one, it's more visually appealing, right? A beautiful home. And who does a beautiful home appeal to the most? Someone that might be interested in that, right? Someone will either they like to see homes because they just like to see homes or they like to see homes because they're in that dreaming stage. They're in that planning stage. They're thinking about homes all day, okay? That's what they're yeah. focused on, right? They're aspire, it's an aspirational thing, right? So someone that has no, you know, that, that is a single guy living in a bachelor pad, couldn't care less about your beautiful, like nice suburban home. Probably not, right? Um, but, but the person you're interested in might find that appealing and will stop that scrolling. It will stop it, okay? It will stop the scrolling and do that, right? So my, the, the Facebook ads do, think about showing them homes and use the best pictures you can find, okay? And, and when I mean best, I'll show you some examples. Green, glass, blue sky, great looking home, okay? That's what I mean. Green, glass, blue sky, great looking home. Another thing to do, and I know that's gonna, it's gonna sound very, you know, web 1.0 emojis. And I, how, however silly that sounds, right? Using emojis to call attention to your headline is still effective. Right. And maybe it was overused a decade ago. Right. You can still use it right now. And I'm talking about, you know, you're not texting with a teenager. I know, I know that. But you all you're trying to appeal to an audience and get their attention and get them to stop scrolling for a second. Okay. And and the next thing you want to do, I've seen that. I'm going to show you some ads that have like walls of text. Folks, the majority of your audience is only going to see the first line of that ad. The image wins. Okay. And some of them might click and see more, and that's cool. But what's going to get their attention is the, number one, the image. 99% of it's going to be the image. And another chunk of that is going to be that first line. The image is going to get them to stop scrolling. And that first line is going to give them some context on what this good looking image is all about, right? So jumping right into it, okay? The top Facebook ad campaigns that we're seeing right now, number one, number one, homes list ads right? And I'll show you what I mean exactly. Homes list ads. You're not only using a home in the image, but you're not, you're not advertising. In this type of campaign, you're not advertising any particular property. You're advertising a list of property, okay? And I think this is hilarious, Tristan, because the very first marketing class I took, I'm going to date myself here, but it was probably end of 2007, maybe early 2008, probably in that mm -hmm. time frame. And the, the teacher was telling us, and it's 100% serious, was his best performing ad ran in the paper, okay? Not joking. That was his best performing ad of the previous year, 2007. That was his okay. best performing ad. I don't, there wasn't a, Facebook wasn't even around, was it? Can't remember. Oh, well, it was still college only, right? So it was like, okay. 2006. So 2000, yeah, 2006 maybe it became, it became more popular, but, but 2007, yeah. he said, this best performing ad was an ad in the paper advertising a list of homes. Hey, do you want to find the best deals here in Seattle? Just call me. I've got a list of homes. There you go. Want to get a list of the best fixer uppers? Give me a call. That was the ad in the paper. That was it. It was advertising a list of homes with a particular feature. Okay. In his case, it was best great deals and it was fixer uppers. That was his book. That was the line in the ad. And it just it included that line and a phone number, and that was it. And he goes, all you have to do is run this ad, and you'll get people calling you right off the paper. So I think that's funny because, what is it, 15 years later, and what's the best performing ad that we see on Facebook? A list of homes, right? Again, the medium is different, 
but but the, I find it funny that the concept is really really similar. Okay, and this is what this is the kind of lists that are performing the best. Well, advertising a list of homes under the median home price. Okay, under the median home price. And I've got an example showing here. I use an example of one of my home markets, Redmond, Washington. And to get great results in Redmond, Washington, that ad had to say, get a free list of homes under $900,000. Because that's a great deal in Redmond, Washington right now. Okay, That's a great deal. Getting your home under $900,000 gets a lot of attention. It's a lot of engagement. It's a lot of clicks. You want that click. You want people to be interested in that. Okay. Advertising a list of homes under the median home price, still the top performing ad, okay? Here are some other ones. And I think I'm including these other ideas, Tristan, because I have an idea, you know, some of these were either they were really, really good a year ago, or I feel they're gonna come back uh, in the next few months. Advertising an off-market property list. Same image, same concept, same everything. It's just that the giveaway you're offering is a list of off-market properties. And, and, you know, number one thing, make sure you can offer that in your market. Some MLSs don't allow it. That's fine. Uh, but, you know, that is a great uh, little bit of a lead magnet you can use. And foreclosed property list, right? I ran this ad uh, uh, for probably three years uh, mm -hmm. from like 2016, 17, 18, right? Unbelievably popular, right? Only when the market just really took off and went nuclear did that perform less because there were just less and less properties out there you could say are foreclosures, right? It's not, it was non existent at a point, at a certain point in time. But you could run ads offering a free list of foreclosed properties and man, you get clicks, you know, all day long, right? So I have a feeling this one might pick up, you know, at some point again, once you actually have this, but not, not, not in the market of today. But under median home price, is a winning formula. Advertise a list of homes under a median home price in your local area, okay? A list of homes. Second most popular ad we're seeing right now, single property ad, okay? Single property ad. You can still, so here's, here's the crazy thing. You can still talk about a homes list in the copy, in the, in the text, but the image happens to be of a single home, single property in your area single property, single property ad. I still call it a single property ad. It doesn't necessarily have to talk about one, two, three Main Street, right? It can just be a single image that also advertises your free homes list that you want to give, okay? Third one, and this is the newest edition, okay? This, is, this was not in my top list the last time we did this, Tristan, which I think was like a year and a half ago. Um, carousel, okay? Carousel, very popular type of ad. And it's essentially the single property ad kind of all lined up together, right? Like same concept, same concept. You're giving people homes, you're showing them homes and the ad advertises access to even more homes, access to even more homes, right? That's the beauty of this, of this uh, kind of model because it maximizes what people actually want, which is access to those homes, right? So let's jump into it, right? Here are some real examples. I had to kind of mock these up because I didn't want to grab ads from people, uh, uh, you know, like real ones from people. So I didn't want to like, you know, attribute that. But this is exactly what these ads look like. And this is from the Gus team, right? So, you know, yeah, great team. Uh, but this is exactly what those ads look like in Redmond, Washington. This is a Redmond, Washington ad, okay? Single. And look at that first headline. Attention, Redmond home buyers. okay? Attention, Redmond home buyers. That's probably all they're going to read in the ad. Let's be very honest with you, right? But I'm getting that part of it too, okay? And then I've got, a, I've got more text below that, but to be just that's not that important, not nearly as important as, as, as the rest of it, okay? Attention, Redmond home buyers, okay? And you know, another thing, Tristan, the, 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 the image and the title you see at the very top, that's my Facebook page, okay? That's my Facebook business page that I'm using to run these ads. So... I'm even branding the business page with what I'm doing. Hey, I help families find their dream home, right? That's a great, and it's got my face on there, right? As an agent. That part, I'll allow you to put your face on. That, that works. That's not a problem. It's when you put the, when the ad is your whole face, that's when the problem becomes starts, right? But mm -hmm. look at this. Get a free homes list, right? And if you click on this, you'll see homes under $900,000 in Redmond, Washington. Get, get your free homes list here. Take a look at that. And then I've got, here's an example of a carousel uh, ad, right? Carousel ad, 
Again, multiple images, beautiful homes, blue sky, green grass. And let me tell you how hard it is to get that in Seattle. This is, this is a Seattle suburb. So it's not easy to do. We all know how they do it, but hey, it works. I'm not complaining. I'm not criticizing. This is exactly what people, that, they like to click on that. They don't want to see a home in a cloudy Seattle day. They just want to see a beautiful home, okay? Give them what they want. Give them what they want. Here are some other examples. This is from Orlando, right? This is from Barry. This is from other Mark, you know, and I brought out some information because I don't, I, I, I don't want to, you know, uh, expose people. So, so I got this with permission though. Um, you can check it out. Uh, it, this gives you more copy, right? Like you can talk about more about it, but look at the, look at the headline. Headline's the same, exact same headline. Attention, target market. Check this out, okay? Get a free, free, beautiful, affordable homes. In this market, median price is 450,000. 450,000 and under, right? Get access to this free list of homes for $450,000 or below. Click on this ad, right? Learn more on this ad, right? That's basically it. And I'm going to give you another pro tip. This is an, another extra one, guys. Another extra one. Because the minute you run an ad like this, you might even get 10 leads in a single day, right? And, and that might be great for some people. That might be terrible for some other people. What, here's a pro tip. Use, some, you, the, use something called the lead form, okay? Very easy to set up on Facebook. You want to add some qualifying questions in there, okay? Because you don't want, so people might not know this, but instant response ads are a thing on Facebook. They click on the ad and their data is already sent. They might not even remember clicking on your ad because it's so easy to send your information nowadays through Facebook. You can set up the ads where it's like an instant response. They have no, they might not even do anything. You click on the ad, boom, your information is sent to you. Okay. It makes it very easy to get leads, but maybe that's not what you want. You want people that are a little bit more qualified. Okay. You can add questions on this lead form. They click on learning more information and they got to fill out the information on the lead form. Okay. So you can ask multiple questions here, multiple questions about, okay, do you own or rent? Uh, you know, wh where are you looking to buy a home? What kind of home are you looking to buy, right? And what I mean is, this is what I mean, right? This is the lead form. You can just create a form on there. It's very simple to do uh, within Facebook. And, you know, we don't, you don't have a ton of time left, Church, and I just want to show people what this looks like, like in practice. And let me, let me share my screen here. So we'll look and see what a real campaign looks like. This is the, this is the campaign that I use to create this, okay? This is exactly what this looks like. I'm oh, creating yeah. a campaign. Can, we, can you guys see that? Yep, 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 yep. Yep. Redmond Homes under 900,000. I had to create a, a, something called an ad set created create by default. Mm -hmm. And these are, and I'm creating these three. I'm creating a, this is an option where I've put a grid. I'm, again, I'm putting homes on there in, in a grid yeah. format. I've got an option on one ad that I've created, which is the single property ad. This is a single property ad. I've got it out there, right? Single image. And I've got another option three that has the carousel, right? That has a carousel. I use the exact same four pictures to make all the ads. I only had four pictures to work with, right? And I just put them in there. Just good looking, good looking pictures of homes. Good looking pictures of homes. That is the key. And this is what I run. What's that, Tristan? No, I said that is the key, the good yeah. looking pictures. Good. That is the game, right? Like you said, you got 13 milliseconds, you can process that. You've got their attention now, what, right? You've got their attention. What's the next thing? And that's where the offer comes in, right? For that free list of homes under the median price for your area, under the median price for your area. That is uh, the, the three ways you can serve up the best performing. A uh, uh, campaign for Facebook leads out there right now. Okay, so really, really great offer for that. So uh, I want to finish up real quick because I think we're almost we're out of time, or we're almost out of time. I want to finish up with one. These are some pro tips, right? These are some pro tips I want to share with folks. I got a free, and I got a goodie. I want to give away a goodie. We're not going to leave here without giving something for free at the end. So give me one minute, um, and I want to tell folks that you, you you get access to something, but there's more to it than this, right? There's more to it than this. Here's some pro tips, okay? Some pro tips. Ad sets and targeting, okay? Ad sets and targeting. Even within the special ads category, you can do some targeting, okay? Has to be interest-based. Can't be demographic. Can't be targeting people's age, their location, like specific neighborhoods. Can't do that anymore. But you can do interest-based targeting. 
and you can just use the general targeting, like no targeting at all. And yeah. you, sometimes it beats out anything else you do because the Facebook algorithm is that good. There's also, so that concept of adding some questions in the lead form, that is called adding friction to the whole process, right? You, you, you want to, you're funneling out some leads. Less people will fill out that form, then we'll just click on the ad. Less people will. And if you expand on that concept, Tristan, you can drop 20 question questionnaires between you and the lead. You can send them to a video first, okay? You can send them to a video about the five tips every homeowner needs when buying a home in Malibu, okay? That is more advanced kind of, uh, 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 of techniques, right? But the principle is the same. Put some friction between you and the lead because only the more qualified leads will jump through that hoop. Only the most qualified leads will do that, okay? Retargeting. Yeah, we didn't talk about retargeting. It's a whole other class, right? Retargeting the ads. Even though retargeting is less effective than it was a year or two ago, it's less effective. Still, I still spend one to three dollars a day retargeting people on my Facebook ads. One to three dollars a day because I'm only targeting a thousand people, right? You don't need a ton of money to target a thousand people. It's like you're targeting like a city block, right? It's a very small amount of people. And I'm serving ads to people that have interacted with my brand, with my Facebook page, with my landing page. You're serving ads to a very, very qualified group of folks. Great stuff. Dynamic ads, okay? We didn't get into that today because you don't need that to get started. But once you understand what dynamic ads can do, it just makes the experimentation, experimentation process that much easier. Like you can mix and match images with ad copy and offers, right? You mix and match and Facebook will figure out the winning combination for you. Like which, which combination of this image this copy and this offer generates the most leads. And you've also got, so Facebook ads are amazing. Ads are the best. There's more ways to generate you know, ads on Facebook. And I'm talking about Facebook groups. I'm talking about Facebook Marketplace. And there's other sources like Google My Business, Google LSA. So again, we don't have time to talk about those today, but there's another, if for the people that are interested, they wanna learn more about this, you should check out a new service, new program we're launching with Power ISA called the Real Estate Growth Blueprint, right? This is something really interesting. You should check it out if you want to learn more about everything I just talked about. And you don't want to just leave it at Ads 101, which is what this is. It's like us getting started with ads. If you want to take your ads to the next level and learn other techniques and, and strategies, not just with ads, not just with ads, generating more leads, check out the Real Estate Growth Blueprint. And we have a freebie, free giveaway, guys. For the people that stayed all the way to the end, troopers, troopers out there, right? For all 36 of you, uh, we can shoot us an email at info at powerisa.com. Shoot us an email, right? And we'll send you the slide deck with every example we had in there for the ads and the ad copy and the images you can use. Send us an email and we'll send that information over to you and we'll send you a template you can use uh, to create these ads, okay? So... That's for people who watched all the way to the end. Love you folks. Love it. And, you know, we're way over time, but Tristan, I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for doing that. Really, really enjoyed this one. Yeah, man, it was great. A lot of good information, good examples. This is what I love. The examples are the key to this. And I I did put in the link there, right? Yeah, but good. We got that. Anything else I missed? No, man. All right, everyone, please do yourselves a favor and email Gus, info at powerisa.com, and he'll send you the slides. And any questions you have, any details you need from Gus, Gus is usually available. He's on our Facebook community as well. So only every day, only every day on LCA. Only every day on LCA. I love, dude, that rhymes. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> Gus, yeah, all right, Gus, enjoy your weather at 70 degrees. I'll enjoy mine in the now low 40s. Improvement, getting so, better. Getting a little better. Uh, let's see what people say and then we'll get going. Mara. Awesome. Awesome class. Thank you so much. Uh, Gay, uh, Jake says that could be a shirt. It sure could, man. <laughs> uh, Gus came up with a really good slogan really fast. Yeah. Howard. Thanks so much. You guys are awesome. Thank you. He says, Sarah's thank you so much. Kim. Thanks for the great info. And we got some thumbs up as well. Thanks everybody. Have an awesome day. Corey, Jackie, Jackie, again, and Mora. Thanks so much. Bye, Gus. Bye, everybody.